Have you ever had a client say to you that they're not afraid of hard work? I know that I get that a lot from my customers and frankly, you might have even said it yourself. I don't think your problem is hard work and I don't think you're actually afraid of hard work. I just think you don't realize or your customers don't realize when they say that what they actually mean. I think they're kind of making a commitment about hard work. And I'm going to tell you the real reason that people get frustrated with their businesses, including yourself and your customers. So we just got back from, uh, frankly, my honeymoon, actually, which is why my office is an absolute state and why everything uh, in my house is a bit of a mess. Let's talk about the real reason that people get frustrated with their business. So as I mentioned, I don't think that most people do uh, worry about hard work. So I think a lot of people think that when it comes to running a business, and this is particularly true with marketing, when they take on a marketing challenge, how often have you taken on a client and they've said to you, look, we're not afraid of hard work. We don't mind working hard. We work hard here. You know, we, we, we grind stuff out. We're real grinders. We're real grafters. You think, fine. But then three months down the line, six months down the line, a year down the line, a week down the line, you found out that they're getting very frustrated with what you consider hard work, but they're getting pissed off and you can't figure out why. The reason is that they're not afraid of hard work. What they're afraid of is no feedback and that's a hundred times worse. So I think most people think that hard work in a business is kind of like pushing a boulder like around a flat surface. Occasionally the boulder isn't gonna move, it's gonna get stuck and they have to really like grind it and grunt over it and push it back. But eventually they'll see themselves making progress and yeah, it's slow progress, but it's progress. And that's not the reason people get frustrated with running a business. And it's also not the reason that people get frustrated with marketing. The problem with working hard and the reason it's frustrating is not because it's slow progress, it's because you appear to make zero progress. So only the other day, I was having a conversation with one of my customers where we were looking at uh, one of their marketing campaigns, and it's doing fine, like it's, it's doing great, um, but it's not accelerating at the rate they wanted. And if anything, they've found, and this happens quite frequently, that they've now got more work on their plate, even though a campaign is running, and we can talk about that in a whole other, a whole other reason, it's called Parkinson's Law. But the reason they're getting frustrated is because they've sent dozens of emails, and it's not the no's that frustrate them. If you get no, that's feedback. The problem is never the negative feedback. The problem is apathy. The problem is silence. That's what people get frustrated with. And when you're running your own business, like as a funnel builder, that's the most frustrating aspect of running a business is getting zero feedback. My number one wish, if I could kind of wave a magic wand and get something, would be someone telling me, yes, you're doing all the right things. Even if you are not getting feedback at the moment, even if things don't seem to be progressing, you're doing the right thing, keep moving in that direction. And this of course becomes extremely dangerous because we all know that if you don't, if your customers don't get feedback from something, they'll want to try it again. How often have you run a test where you've driven a bunch of traffic to a page, or you've paid for a bunch of ads, or you've started creating content, and because there hasn't been an immediate explosion in income and people are fucking throwing money at you from all over the world, your customer goes, let's try something else. This can be become extremely dangerous because changing tactics or pivoting, as it's often called, is not a sensible, appropriate thing to do. Just because you haven't made uh, progress or doesn't look like you've made progress doesn't mean you're not making progress. Kind of one of the like real life examples you'd give with this would be the equivalent of compound interest on like saving money. If you put $100 a month or $100 a week aside for the first five years, the growth on that is gonna be minimal. And it's not until like six, seven, eight, nine, ten years down the line that it really starts to stack up and you start to get meaningful feedback. And it's the same with writing blog content. When I wrote a blog post every single day for 2016, and I did a video every single day for either 2017 or 2018, I can't remember, um, immediately the feedback was pretty low. And what was interesting is I actually didn't have a massive growth in subscribers. I didn't have a massive growth in traffic to my website. But eventually I did. And before I saw growth and feedback, a lot of people were like, you should start again, try a different channel, try a different tactic, use a different video strategy, use a different video formula. But now I see that the growth is faster per week and per month than the entire year previously when I was doing 
that massive amount of work. So when your customers get frustrated with the lack of feedback, what are you supposed to do? And this is kind of a mindset thing and it can be very difficult getting a customer kind of to stick with something when there doesn't appear to be any feedback. When customers are investing in a marketing project, when they're not getting any feedback and even if they're not getting no's, most customers would prefer a no, they mistake a lack of feedback with a lack of progress. Thomas Edison said that I haven't uh, failed at making the light bulb 10,000 times or whatever. I've just found 9,999 things that didn't work, regardless of the fact that whether he did or didn't invent the light bulb or whatever. He understood that progress is made regardless of whether there's feedback or not. If I had published blog posts every single day and thought, yeah, but it hasn't increased my traffic yet and stopped, I would never get the feedback. You have to push through that barrier and customers have to understand that. And if you need to explain that to customers, you need to break it down in, you know, um, in the term that certainly Thomas Edison did, but also it might be that you're choosing the wrong type of customer. I find that businesses who are investing the owner's money are very hesitant to continue working at something and work hard when there's not getting any feedback. Even stuff that doesn't cost a huge amount of money and you still have to grind away at like creating content, sending a lot of emails, creating videos, creating podcasts, uh, promoting and publishing, you know, if they're not getting immediate feedback, they're gonna wanna quit and try something else. And again, I've talked about this, like climbing the mountain and um, when you try and get midway, and people are gonna tell you to switch and stuff and you think, well, that will be an easier opportunity over there. There's no tactic that's easier or works better than any other tactic. Commitment to the tactic and commitment to the niche is what matters. Is this anything that you've ever struggled with? Let me know in the comments below if this was something that you really struggled with. I know I used to, uh, particularly when starting out my channel, particularly when starting out um, my, my blog, and it's very difficult for me to kind of uh, convince people that they're doing the right thing. However, I can assure you that if you're committing to something and doing it for long enough, you will be successful. That's the goal. Success is not defined as a sudden explosion in interest because you've picked this magic right channel or you've picked this magic right tactic. Success is defined because you've lasted longer and done it longer than anybody else. And chances are you'd be successful because you've failed more times than other people have even tried. So if you're continuing to send emails, if you're continuing to send um proposals, if you're continuing to pitch, don't mistake a lack of feedback as a lack of progress because the two are irrelevant and you'll often find that just because you think you want to hear loads of no's and that's what people think they want to, they want to hear going up against people and people saying no, 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 no. And while that does happen, it's more likely that you'll fall on deaf ears and no one's going to hear from you. Anyway, let me know in the comments below if this video was useful. Give me a like and hit the share button, share it on Facebook or um, you know Twitter or something like that. That really helps me out. I'll send it out to your mates via email. That really helps me and helps the channel. And if you give me a like as well, it lets me know that you enjoyed the video. In the meantime, I've got some training down below on how to find your first marketing funnel client in the, in, within 30 days or something like that. That's in the description down below. In the meantime, I will see you on the next video and keep building those funnels. As per usual, I've got a couple of videos to the side here that are going to be sort of that you can just check out and do whatever you want with. I've got no idea what I'm going to put here because I know I have to do roughly 20 seconds uh, for the um, end screen. So in the meantime, I uh, yeah, I'll let you click on one of these. Cheers, guys.